Hey, good morning, everyone. Happy Monday. Welcome to my segment on Craft Round the Clock this morning. We are going to do some more painting this week. I know I come to you lots of times on Mondays, and um, here I am again. So I thought we would do something for Thanksgiving, a little turkey of sorts. We'll see what happens with him. You, you've seen me on here. You know I paint. I use acrylics most of the time when I'm on here with you guys, and I show you what I'm doing step by step. So welcome and say hello when you pop in. I am coming to you this morning from stream through StreamYard so that you could see me painting. I had some suggestions of um, a, a better view for you guys. So here we are. Good morning, Cheryl. Thank you. Um, so this is a better way. You can see me up here in the corner, but you can see what you really need to see mostly is the painting. So please say hello. I can see you guys popping on. I can uh, answer your questions here on the chat. It is pretty easy. StreamYard may ask you your permission um, to use to use the app. That just allows me to see your name. If you want, you don't have to click that. Just tell me who you are when you make a comment. But please make a comment and please say hello and good morning. Cheryl from Tinker's Cart Art here this morning. Early, uh, early morning today for me. So I'm glad to see you. Hey, Rosie. Thank you for watching. And so what I wanted to do is something with the Thanksgiving theme. And then after today, we'll jump into Christmas. Uh, turkey, I thought would be appropriate. I just made a little sketch. We're going to kind of go uh, by the seat of our pants. I've got some reference photos of turkeys up on the screen here uh, for myself. I did a little sketch. This is a little plaque. Uh, a little sign I got at Hobby Lobby on clearance. It was maybe four or five dollars. It's great because it's already comes with a little stained frame. I didn't have to gesso or anything. It has a background already painted. Hook hanger already on it. You could not beat it. Hi, Charlotte. Good morning, Linda. Cynthia, thank you guys. Please say hello. And this is my Craft Around the Clock segment this morning, but you're also finding me live on YouTube and on my Tinker's Cart Art page. And if I could be so um, bold as to ask, I am almost at 8,000 uh, followers and I would love to get my uh, my goal of 8,000. So if you guys don't follow me over on Tinker's Cart Art, if you could just click follow, it's so simple and um, it's a great community of creatives. So please, if you would do that for me, I would love that. And happy Monday. I'm gonna pull out some colors, uh, just ordinary acrylics. You can use whatever you have. I use the craft paints, I use my Liquitex I love, I use golden, I use heavy body, whatever you have, just jump in and try painting. This is going to be an easy little project, I hope, because I've not painted it before. But I'm not going to get too detailed. It's a small little board. It's probably not that big. What is it? About, uh, about 10, almost 10 inches by 8. So it's like an 8 by 10. But I love the fact that I don't have to do anything to it now. It's ready to roll. So good morning. And um, I just was watching Pat with her cool tree. What a great idea. I really admire all the crafters on Craft Around the Clock. I'm a painter. I do a little crafting. I do my best. But I'll tell you, the ideas I get are amazing. And if you do not um, subscribe already, please, the link is in the description. And you will find some wonderful ideas all day. And never mind the ideas. It's a great community. Just I just sit and watch and listen lots of times. Hi, Tracy. Good morning. Hey, you guys, I hear that the um, gardening people are outside. So if it's too loud, let me know. I'll quickly shut the windows. So please just in the comments, let me know if it sounds loud at any point. I'm going to just pull out some colors. I'm going to do my turkey not exactly realistic. I want to add some color as I do to my paintings a lot. So I'm going to just get out some fall colors, oranges. Um, I always love to add a little teal in there. I know um, that seems crazy, but when I'm painting animals and different things, I throw teal in when I can. So I'm just going to really look at my reference photos, get a few colors out I like. Uh, something else important when you're painting, you don't have to be a slave to the photo or to the reference material. You don't have to paint it like it's a photograph. We have enough photographs. You guys know it. Look at your phone. You've got a million photographs. We want our interpretation of what we see. And I like to paint with color and whimsy. So I can change anything I want. I'm the boss of my painting. You're the boss of your painting. Don't be a slave to saying, oh, but what is that exact color? That color is that turkey? What color? Try to mix up the colors. Don't. Just have fun with it. And it really will become your painting. So good. I see Tanya. Good afternoon. Where are you located? For me, it's 8.30 in the morning here in Florida. So it's a bit early. And I usually like to have my paints ready, you guys. So I apologize. I'm sort of just pulling things out here now. Um, 
but we will get there, right? It's a pretty quick little painting, I'm hoping. You see me pop on and paint um, things. Honestly, I don't decide sometimes till right before I'm coming on. Uh, I had an idea for this. Since I was coming on so early this morning, I did have a little idea for this, um, and I sketched it out. So I start with a little sketch. Keep a sketchbook handy. That's always a good idea because you can – you know, always jot down ideas. You see something, you take a photo, you like a color palette. Just make some little notes. And um, and the next thing you know, you have a little notebook full of lots of different ideas and you don't have to struggle about what will I paint today. All right. I'm not going to put a background so much. I kind of like the idea of the turkey here. Maybe I'll put a little swash on the bottom so he's not floating in midair. Got a little pumpkin on the side. And you could have writ you could write something if you wanted to. I hadn't thought of anything yet, but let's just paint the turkey and the pumpkin, and then we can decide. I know I don't want a solid background. I don't want it to look like a solid painting. I want it more like a little vignette. So we can go ahead and jump in. Now, I'm not sure. I may even use a wash technique with my acrylics on this guy and not paint it solid. I really don't know yet. So we're gonna do that as we go. And you and so I'm going to uh attempt to cute and cute. Is that a word? I'm making it up up the turkey because let's face it turkeys aren't the cutest animals they're not the cutest cuddly fuzzy soft cute animals so maybe i could make them a little cuter let's give it a whirl when i paint generally i go from the back to the front this is an animal so it's not going to be it doesn't really matter but i think i'll work on the tail feathers work on the body we'll come over to the pumpkin we'll kind of maybe make him like a, with, with a bigger eye than he should have that kind of cute makes things a little cuter when you put a big eye it looks more like a kid you know child they have those cute looks so that's what i'm going to attempt to do so say hello but also if you have any questions as i go or any comments or any suggestions i would love to hear them so we have a great group here thank you guys for joining me and let me know what you think of this view the stream yard is kind of a nice way to do it i'm just not exactly sure how it's showing up if you're watching on a mobile device so please let me know if if that works for everyone okay so let's jump in and i love the idea that they have the little uh, striped bits and, and on a two turkey it's not so stripy but I wanted to give it a little bit of a pattern on the feathers and I'm glancing at some turkey pictures here I'm going to kind of just make my own uh, make it up as I go because I just want to have it sort of some cool colors I know it's a little darker up here and I'm just going to mix up and I'm glad you can see my palette a little bit on you oh Spain time you're in Spain well thank you and welcome I love it when we have people across the pond there watching and we often do and I thank you for coming popping in I'm going to do some dark feathers up here I'm using just a little flat brush I love flat brushes because I can get a nice broad stroke but I can also get a nice thin stroke if I need to it's very versatile I can use it for a lot of little things so I'm just going to paint in and I wanted to see, maybe I wanted it to be a little more washy. I sometimes, um, you know, have more of a watercolor look, which I use my watercolors a lot, but I might want just a little bit of a wash look. I like that better. It almost gives it a little highlighting in one stroke. So let's just take my little brush, add water to it, and let's just give these guys a little bit of a wash. So you can make your acrylics behave a little like watercolor if you like that look too. Um, that Yes, Tanya, I did. Um, I do remember having someone from Spain, and, and I'm going to, uh, uh, I do remember. That's, that's great. I'm sort of getting my, uh, it's hard when I'm on here and I'm going kind of so fast talking and things, but I'm going to try to remember too. I can remember where some people are watching from. So see how I just added water to my paint? And as, if I add a little more pigment, I can get a little darker bit. This almost, I like the idea that how that is a little more faded going towards the back. So that's kind of cool. So I think I like that. I think I'll go with kind of a washy look on this turkey. And what's the worst that can happen? We paint over it or we deepen the colors. That's the great thing about acrylics is that you can fix things and you can paint over things and it's really a forgiving medium. Uh, so I think that's a little start. So did you see, I just made those little strokes actually by using just one stroke. I, I thinned down my paint and I just, with the brush flat like that, I sort of just pressed. Let me go darker so you can see it, just sort of pressed. See how you get that little C stroke? I start almost with a brush perpendicular, almost like um, the, the chisel edge and then I press and I, curve and I lift it back up. It's like a little C stroke. Makes it kind of a cool little stroke for those feathers. Good morning, Carrie. Thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. I know it's early and 
isn't it a great way to start the week and start the day though? I hope everyone had a great weekend. Um, with Veterans Day, it was a bit of a longer weekend, so it was kind of nice. I hope everybody had a had a nice weekend. And we're all getting ready. I, I will do this last Thanksgiving project, but I think then we'll start in on Christmas. So give me some ideas of what you want to see me paint for Christmas. We will do snowmen and holly and all sorts of things. Hey, Mary, good morning. But I'd love suggestions. And you guys are great. I do write them down and I put them in a little list and then I pull from them on what you might want to see me paint. So, all right. So I've got that little stripe there. I want to make it a little bit few different colors. Let me go with maybe an orange now. And like I said, keep in mind, it does not have to look like a realistic turkey. I'm not doing, you know, a painting um, and trying to get it to look realistic. I'm doing a little bit more of a whimsical painting using colors I love. You might find that you develop a color palette that you really like. And that becomes a little bit of a signature of your style too. I have really enjoyed pinks and Teals. I've just moved to Florida. You probably heard me say that bunches of times. But it really has influenced what I have been painting. So please let me know. Um, I may go open and shut these windows if it sounds too noisy behind me. I think I will just shut that one real quick. It might help a little but I'm not sure how the microphone is. So please comment if you don't hear me and I'll shut more windows. I was going to switch my days from Monday because of the fact that they do the lawn on Mondays. And so I switched it to a Tuesday one day and guess what, they did the lawn on Tuesdays. So anyway, we'll do our best. So what are your plans for Thanksgiving? I am excited because now that I'm here in Florida and my family, a lot of my family is right here. It's gonna be fun. I'll have my son for Thanksgiving for first time in a long time and my siblings. So it's going to be a busy Thanksgiving, but a fun day. And uh, what do you have for plans? I'd love to hear what other people's traditions and plans are. If you want to pop in and, and say, you know, put it in the comments there, I would love to hear. So there, just a little orange because that's a fall color. And, and that's just sort of, I think it'll be nice. I like teal and I know the turkey's not teal, but you know what? I think I'm going to do a little teal on the feathers and we could use some gold maybe. Let's put a little teal bit. And I'm kind of, I like the way these strokes are going. So I'm going to continue doing these little scalloped strokes. I'm not really concerned on how wide they are or how thin they are. I'm, I'm sort of keeping my brush a little bit steady and, and they're, they're about the right size. And because I'm thinning this paint down, it's more really waterier than I would use. It really is flowing nicely for me. And that's a little trick. Even if you're not after that watercolor technique, you want to get a fine line or or a line that's shaped just right or thin, you know, grasses. Thin your paint down. There's nothing that you says you can't. Thin your paint down with water. I, I just uh, take a little bit of water and, and just dip it into my paint and, and mix it in as I go. And again, you can always add more pigment and get it a little darker if you need to. Rosie, that sounds like what we'll do. Yes, it's always too much. Don't you always worry that you don't have enough so you cook like one more thing? And uh, But that's okay because... Because then you can snack all day. If people can take leftovers home, I think that's the best. And so, I think I like the way this is like a little stripey kind of a kind of a tail. Uh, gold. I don't think I want the bright yellow I got out. I want more of a gold. I do love this antique gold. It's like a yellow ochre color. I use that a lot. I know sometimes I start with just the, simply the basics, the primaries, and I show you how to mix as we go, which is always possible too. Um, but I do love this color. I use this color a lot. Your daughter's at one. Oh, pacing. That is true, Dolores. It is. It is pacing. So that that's going to be fun. Then you'll see everybody that day. Yeah, I'm going to have everybody here, which is kind of nice. I don't. I just love to 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 entertain. I'm not a great cook, but everyone's chipping in and bringing something. Uh, my sister-in-law is making the turkey. My brother. I'm going to make a prime rib because I have found it being a non-cook that is so easy to cook and so wonderful. And uh, as long as I have my meat thermometer, I'm good. My husband is the pie maker, so he's making all the pies. All right, so I've got a gold band in there. I think I might want it a little brighter. I might go right over it with a little bit of a little bit of white and some yellow. Okay, and then we have a last little bit of tail feathers. 
it's hard looking at her references of like actual turkeys because they're very brown and blah, but uh, I want to use something bright there. I think I'm going to go with like a brighter orange, maybe there. Let's try it and see. Oh, Mary. Well, you know what? It doesn't really matter what day you, you get together. I think it's just getting together. So that would be nice. Uh, and thank them. That's hard work and working when all of us are celebrating. But it doesn't matter the day. It's more getting everyone together. It's very close to the other brown, but that's okay. I had a little burnt sienna in there. And the other orange I meant, not the other brown. Yeah. So I am, I am looking forward to getting some Christmas designs done. That'll be fun. We'll do some new things this season. I'm going to go right into the body of the turkey. It's a rough sketch I made from my other sketch. Now, sometimes if you would like to work out your sketches first on your sketchbook, you can certainly trace your design on. I have actually sketched him uh, right on, but you can certainly trace it once you get it just right on the paper. Trace it onto your surface, and then you're not erasing your lines and all that. You have a nice little design there. Oh, Elizabeth, thank you. See, that's a, that's what it is. It's a, picking out colors. Sometimes it's about the colors, not about what the what you're painting. I'm a big believer believer of taking inspiration because I am a plein air painter, so I am outside painting a lot. And it took many years for me to get over the fact that I don't want to paint it so it looks like a photograph. I know people think that's sometimes a compliment. Oh, you're painting. It's great. It looks like a photograph. But I want to have it have it in my personality. And like I said, if I wanted a photograph, I could take a photograph. So, Oh, Carolyn, yes, I have a Santa coming up actually with my membership. But maybe I can do a quick little version of the Santa for us here. Uh, Craft Around the Clock, we have the 45-minute segments. But I do have um, some things coming up for Christmas. I do have uh, some online classes I'll tell you about. I do have a workshop coming up for landscapes. And I have an art membership. And in the art membership, we're going to be painting this Santa. And we're going to paint him a couple ways. So this is so that you can personalize if you wish. But where it's only one name, I also made a version where he's holding a scroll and you can add multiple children's names or adults, whoever's on the good or the bad list. Um, so this will be one of my membership paintings. And uh, if you would like more information, I'll, I'll grab that and put it in, in the comments. But we also have some other cute Christmas uh, things coming up, you know, uh, winter. We have, I love this little one. Um, the polar bear. These are all in my art membership, but I do take and do little quick segments of a lot of these subjects on my craft around the clock segment. So do keep an eye out for that. This was what something we did last year, which I will do again. I was thinking of maybe painting that on an ice skate, which I have another ice skate to paint. So anyways, let's get painting. And then, um, and I will show you what, my, what the painting is coming up for the landscape workshop. And then I will put information about the art membership in the workshop. But you can always message me or look on my Facebook page. Oh, Lisa. Lisa is one of my members, and, and so as well as Charlotte, who's here this morning. And that's going to be so much fun. And you guys, if you're beginner painters or painter wannabes and you don't really even paint, I know they look. some of the paintings look a little more detailed, but I take you through them baby step by baby step. It's a lot more um, detailed uh, going along step by step than I do here because I'm doing kind of a quick painting. But um, I make them easy for you. Honestly, I have people who have never painted before. Shocks me as much as you guys. But it is, um, it just is it, it, like anything. You can learn to do anything. Um, it's not like you have to be born with a talent. You don't have to draw straight lines. You don't have to, even if you draw just stick people, you know, I've heard all those things. If you want to learn it, and I am there to bring you along, and you have the tracers, it's like me with saying I can't cook very well. Okay, so I can make a prime rib if I watch um, somebody on YouTube or read the directions. I couldn't just go in the kitchen and say, oh, I wasn't born with the talent for this. I can't do it. So you can do it. Okay. Um, the body of the turkey is a bit darker. I think I will go darker and maybe throw in some lights. The little, uh, the, they're so, I had to say it, they're just not the prettiest bird, but we're going to do our, our best to get him looking pretty cute. Let's see. And I'm really going off the top of my head here. So who knows what we're going to come up with. I want to go a little darker so that the tail feathers are really kind of the, the focal point a little bit. And I am going to not worry about my paint being washy because I want it to be more of a watercolory kind of look. So I'm going to just take water on my brush 
and kind of scooch that around. Speaking of watercolor, we are doing, Lisa, I don't know, will you make it today? Um, this afternoon, we have a live Zoom for the membership, and we are doing a watercolor wreath, um, although it can be painted in your acrylics, however you'd like. So we're doing this little piece today. It'll be a fun little project. Um, in the group, in the membership, I go live by Zoom a couple times a month with the group, and then they also get two recorded paintings a month. So it's quite a bit. It's not like you have to keep up, though. Remember, it's not Netflix. You're not going to binge. It is just so that you, there's a variety for everyone. I do I do still lifes. I do animals. I do landscapes. So it's not to say, okay, don't say, oh, I'm not, I, I can't keep up. It's not to keep up. It's to go through that whole library of two years' worth of paintings and finding what you like to paint. That's what it is, Bo. It's not, it's not you're never behind. <laughs> I think I like that dull, dark color for the body. And, um, oh, good, Lisa. I'm glad. It's, uh, like I said, it's very ca we're very casual um, on the Zooms. You can ask questions. We go along. We have fun. It's a nice way to network with others. Uh, we just have fun when we do the Zooms. And it's always recorded. So, you know, if you don't make it, it's always recorded. This is a Payne's Gray I'm using, which I tend to shy away from black a lot of times. And the Payne's Gray is a very blue gray. I don't know if you could, it reads that way in the painting there, but it's a blue gray. And I, it has a little color. As, instead of just going with a straight black, which is not my, you know, because I like color, I don't, I would use it for eyes and details and what whatnot. But I tend to use Payne's Gray when I need a dark. If I need it even darker, I'll mix it with a little alizarin or a little red or something. And I'm just scooching my wet paintbrush along the edge here to kind of get that dark out of there. It's a little dark where it's settled. And when I'm watercolor painting, and let's see how it works here with, with the acrylics just wired down. So I like to drop in some color too sometimes um, just for fun. And also, you know what, too, you can make a lot of cool techniques with your watercolor when it's wet. Like if you want to make clouds, you can just dab in a paper towel or a sponge but you know what I think I might like this for the texture of him honestly this is all off the top of my head so I don't even know what will happen but I kind of like that I like that look which makes me think that looks a little heavy to me on that but that little orange streak but I'm going to put some details I think I'll put some little details that on that um, tail with some lines and maybe look at you know the feather look with the little you know, you know what I mean, this, right? <laughs> okay, I missed a little tiny spot by his eye. Let's put that in. And what color their beaks can be sort of, you know what, I'm looking to see what color are their beaks, and they can be almost anything. I see different colors, but I'm going to go with that dark gold just to see. Rosie, yes, and I, if I don't have a paint gray, I will take my black and mix it with a little maybe ultramarine blue. I I'll tell you what I use. I, I don't find Payne's Gray in any of the craft paint, so I do have it in Liquitex. I adore the golden um, the golden liquids. There's so much pigment in them, but they're pricey. These guys, I find, that for the price point, because you get four ounces versus the two in the craft paint, and they're like $4.99, and you can find them on sale. I really love a few of the, well, a lot of the colors of Liquitex, but especially... Uh, Thalo blue and green, I cannot find equal colors like this in any of the craft paints. The craft paints always seem to have a little bit of a pigment white in them or just that true pigment. These are true pigment. These two together, and it will make gorgeous teals for you. And then I also love the quinacridone magenta, which I use for a lot, again. But I have some real favorites in the craft paints, too. The only red I use all across the board, really, uh, is Tuscan red from the Deco Art. But I do love the Payne's Gray. Um, so, okay, so I think I want to try dropping in a little color in, in this guy too. Let's see. Um, maybe let's, I'm not sure, maybe a little of the blue or teal. I'm taking it just watery, as you can see. And if I like it, I leave it. And if I don't, I can wipe it up. But I just like the texture I'm getting with this little crumpled paper towel. I like that. Doesn't it give it a little oomph, just a little something? So I like it. So I'm going to put it all over, very watery. And it's almost fine like that, but I'm just going to dab a little bit. And while it's wet, I can pull a little out. And that, I think, is enough. I think I may, when it's dry, shade under the wing. And maybe around the, what's that thing called again? Waddle? Is that what it is? The little red bit? I think it might be. And I'll watch our time. But this is a simple little painting, so we have plenty of time. Oh, Elizabeth, thank you. It was a fun painting. Um you know, it's painting people and people shy, you know, a lot of people shy away from that. But um, again, if you go step by step, it's not bad. 
So let's see time, 8.54. So we're 8.30, so we're till 9.15 with plenty of time. There you go. There, Dolores, thank you. You could want, if you want to get a little more whimsical even, you could paint a little pilgrim hat on him, right? I was going to paint, I did, it, I did it last year though. I did a little gnome that was turkey-like, so he had like a turkey tail. He was kind of cute. All right, so I can see I have a pencil mark. I didn't really follow. You can't hardly even see it there, but I'll just erase that once everything is dry. And eyes, they just have little black beady eyes. I can just take a little fine brush, and I'm going to just use my Payne's Gray. And like I said, if I need it even darker, if I add a little red to that, it's going to even deepen it up a little bit. I'm going to paint a little detail, a little eye. Now, a little circle like this, I could have very well just taken the back end of the brush, dipped it in my paint and made an eye. That's an easy way to do circles, and you can use different size brushes and get different size circles. So I could have easily made the little eye that way. I just painted it black for now. And even on this little turkey or any animal or people, remember you've got to put a nice highlight in their eye. It brings them alive, but you wanna let that dry first. I don't need to do too much to the beak, I don't think, but maybe put a little orange on there might be, might be nice. Cause I'm not sure, I think I see them, different colors on them. So I'm going to just give that a little orange. And how I'm doing that, especially with this washi technique, is I sometimes just load my brush just in the corner with a little paint. And then when I go to brush on my painting, I've just got a little strip of color. And it sort of is just blending. And it's not like I have to even go back and blend it. So I just go with the color up towards the top. I'm just giving the top of that beak a little bit of an orange look there. I'm kind of liking him. I really didn't know what he would look like. And it's not my favorite, you know, turkeys aren't, like I said, my favorite thing to paint, but there. So I just got a little bit of orange there. And while the paint is not completely dry, you can always take a wet brush and pull some out if you want to almost make a little highlight by pulling some of that paint out there. All right, that little water, let's get that in. But um, well, let's go in with the red and then see what it looks like. And we can always adjust that. I think I might go in with a little orange because that looks a little harsh. It's a little bit bright. Let's try making it kind of orangey more. I know they're red, but you know what? And you know what I did is I didn't do, I went with my, I went with my black color because I was going along in a little nice little way there, but his heads are, his, their heads are red sometimes most. Well, I see some blue here. Let's see, I'm going to leave it. I can look up more pictures, but. Let me know if this is really off if I leave his head like that. Maybe it should be a little bit of more of an orangey red color. I'll pull up some more pictures too and see. But all in all, even regardless of what we're painting, you're getting the idea of how to put paint down sometimes, how to work with your colors. A lot of times I just know things need to be have different values. Value is very important, more important color. I know I preach that a lot, but um, to make your painting interesting, you want some darks and lights. So I, even without having a picture in front of me, I could say, okay, I've got the little waddle in there and it looks just plain uh, red there, but you want to still shade things. So I would want a light side. So maybe the sun's on this direction. The front would be lighter. I could lighten that up. And then a little darker on the other side, just to give some value into the painting. Now I'm highlighting white, and of course the white is the background, but it still it still helps. Um, it just is a little lighter in the front now. And let's just get some wings. We'll get his little feet in, and then we're going to. Um, I'm going to just Google a couple of turkeys here, too, and see. I just want to make sure that head is okay. But you guys can let me know, too. Oh, Cynthia, thank you. Thank you, guys. And that's the thing. I'm telling you not to worry so much about what it actually looks like. And when you're painting, you make it your own. And I'm worrying about, like, if the head's okay. But if all turkeys have, like, red heads, I don't want to have it that different. So I'm going to just take a peek here and see. Images. Some are kind of, yeah, he's not looking exactly like a real turkey, but I like the way the colors are. A lot of them have some of a bluish head and a little bit of red here, so I think we're going to just stick with what we're doing, and we'll see what he looks like. We have plenty of time to kind of touch him up, and that's a good thing, like I said, about acrylics. 
And if I wanted to add, I've got this nice base here, but he looks like he's kind of looks like he's bald a little bit. So he needs a little feathery bits maybe. So maybe I'll go over here with some of that dark just on the edge of my brush, kind of like I just did with that orange. And I could just with those little strokes, I could give him some, just some little strokes that appear to be feather-like. I think that looks good. And I could do some in the book too. No, it doesn't have to all be. I could mix some blue strokes in there. Paint is still a little watery, but I'm picking up more of the pigment and paint just on the corner. I, I'm a little bit out of your view there. So I'm just sort of taking my brush, picking some paint up on the corner. And just giving some little strokes that are sort of representing feathers here and there. I'm going to mix a little brown with that Payne's gray. I want to tone that down a little bit. And you sort of kind of go right around the body. And I've, if I look at it and I see like these look a little dark, I can just kind of scoop some away with just a wet brush. So don't panic when you're painting and you're not tied into what you put down. Like I said, if it's wet, you can fix it right away. If it's dried paint, you can paint over it. Just relax and enjoy the enjoy the, the um, activity and not really worry about what's, what's going to happen. Look at that big dark one. That's a very dark one. Good morning, Donna. Thanks for popping in. Thanks for joining me here. And if you want to see more painting and see more what's going on, please feel free to click on Tinker's Cart Art and give me a follow. I would appreciate that. It takes just a second. There's a little texture in the head, so I'll just kind of dab the paint a little bit. I'm not going to go and do like little individual feathers. And if it was a bigger painting, and, and usually I will be after you to step back and look because no one else is looking at it this close. So always try to step back. For me, I can look into the video there, which is kind of cool. And that's when I kind of see when things are uh, that I might want to uh, adjust. I saw that these were a little dark looking. You know, he could almost be speckled a little. I love spattering with a toothbrush sometimes too. Give him a little speckle. This little wing here, let's get that little wing in. And let's put some color in like we did on the... Uh, tail. So just, just kind of copy a little bit of what I've used for these. And again, is it a real turkey? Like, no, it's just our little version of a turkey. So I'm going to almost make the tip. I'm going to kind of copy that little pattern a little bit. So I'll just rinse off my brush each time and go into my new color. It's kind of more of a goldy orange. I'm still using a little bit of that sea stroke because I like the way that looks with my uh, his feathers. Oh, good morning from Canada. Says, oh, good to see you again here. Good morning. Thanks for popping in. I need to get a little more teal maybe in the rest of my turkey. I just wanted a little something to put. I have a little collection of turkeys, you know, and... Um, I thought this would be cute to set behind them. I was kind of looking for something for my own decor as well. So, and I always look at the whole as I'm painting. And I know this red is just because it's just so different than all my colors, it's kind of bugging me. So I'm going to just kind of go and add a little more orange to that. And now it, it just kind of blends with my painting a little more. Now we've got a little bit of a goldy color there. Mix these golds up. And then we'll finish with an orange. I can actually just dip right into that with my brush. Actually, can you tell I've been painting the whole painting so far with just this little flat brush, which is kind of cool. Alrighty, little feet will be gold. And they're just simple little, just following my little pencil sketch that I put on there. And, and again, that's just the color, but we do want to give it a, even though it's just thin little legs, we still want to give it a little, shadow and a highlight so let that sit for a minute maybe we need a little bit of a nostril little line in his nose the highlight makes his eye come alive that's just going to be a little it could just be simple as a little white dot or something like this it's just a little tiny um turkey and I want to put some detail on these feathers. So let's try that and see how that works. 
let us give uh, some line work. I'm gonna get a little liner brush. When I'm doing line work, I like to have a liner brush. So it's just a brush that has a little longer tip on it, holds more paint and allows me to make some nice line work. Hi, Deb. Good morning. Thanks for popping in. We're just kind of winging it this morning. So I just want a little turkey for Thanksgiving. He's a little wonky looking, but I like him. Um, oh, Rosie. Yeah, I am generally using all the brushes too. So don't think this is like uh, the way I always paint. But for some reason, this this morning sort of worked. So let's go in. Let's give some, and this is decorative. This is going to be purely decorative. I'm glancing over at some of my inspiration photos, but uh, I sometimes just using my eye. I just want to bring a little of this white back in. So maybe I'll just kind of just do a little bit there. And I'm going to uh, try to get a little more pigment on my brush because that was watered down. It's kind of washy, which is not bad, but let's just go along. And I'll move some of these paints out of my way because I'm going to be shifting this. I just love this uh, palette of colors. So I'm going to try to incorporate that a little more, maybe move some teal in different spots. Teal has been my go-to color for a while lately. I don't know why. <laughs> Debbie, secondhand treasures. Good morning, Deb. You are near me because you're in Claremont, I believe, right? And I'm over here in Lakeland now. So um, I love looking at your antique and thrift store finds. I watched your segment the other day. I'm always haunting them. The thrift stores as well trying to find some cool things so this funny i just had this it was a little clearance item from hobby lobby but i love the fact that i don't have to do anything it's already it was already painted primed it was already with a little stained frame perfect so i think i will just do that along here just some decorative touches on that tail. You could go crazy and do a really fun, funky turkey and with really interesting, like zentangly almost designs on the tail. You could go crazy and do whatever you like. This is really, uh, this. I like the way this is looking. I'm gonna go and outline each of my stripes, I guess. I think I like that look. I'm almost wishing I had a wider teal stripe, but that's okay. I can throw some teal in there, here and there. It's almost working out to be like little individual, like not individual, but these big feathered areas. Maybe a little bit over here, same thing, just a little rougher, not really so calculated as far as the little scallops. And then we've got to divide them a little bit. And so let me let the white dry before I drag anything through it that way. Uh, I'm going to get a little heavier white on the front here. Maybe a little bit of... Maybe a little white in the beak there. If I wanted, I think I might want to just outline his eye a tiny bit. It looks a little stark. So I'm just going to almost dab white. I'm not making a perfect little white line. I'm dabbing it so it's a little irregular, but it kind of looks a little bit like a turkey eye, I think. The legs, let's make them a little white on the front so we have that highlight on the front. I know it's a little difficult because of the white background, but, and I'm going to get a little dark wash like that on the back side of the legs. Even, like I said, a simple little thing like the legs, but there would be still the color, and then it would be a highlight in a sh shadow, maybe just some burnt sienna on the back side of the leg. And we've got, let's see, 8.30, 9.15, we have... Um, about seven minutes left, it looks like. And I've been talking a lot. Usually I'm I'm furiously painting, but I figured this is kind of a nicer, easier pace on that one. Deb, I would love that. Yeah. Um, contact me anytime because I'm pretty free these days. Um, I'm actually coming up that way this week because I have to pick up some paintings in Mount Dora from a from a show. So um, I would be passing by. That might be fun to get together at some point. My turkey's floating in midair, so let's just wet a big square brush, dip it into something like ground cover. I'm just using this burnt sienna. See how I'm kind of working it on the palette first before I go on so that I can get kind of just a little bit of a, just a little bit of a wash so that these guys aren't just floating. And that almost is enough. Sometimes less is more, and I don't need to really touch it again. I'm going to leave it because perhaps I want to put some writing down here. You never know. And now as I go, I reevaluate everything and I want to add a little more color in my turkey. I've got that gray color, but you know what? Just for feathers, I might just go in and do the same strokes we did, but using some of the colors we used in the 
turkey fit tail very washy very watery and just bringing some of that color throughout which also allows me to maybe make that head a little bit more like the turkeys that I was looking up they could have a little more of a red on their head but I'm not going to paint it solid I'm just kind of giving it a little wash I like that because it kind of gives a nod to the turkey uh, but um it's still using my fun colors and I've just overshot it here. So with a clean brush, I can just clean that up. And there we go. The pumpkin I'm going to do kind of washy too. We painted bunches of pumpkins and I always keep the recordings and I post them. So if you want to look back on my page, you'll see lots of pumpkins being painted too. Okay, Deb, I'll message you. Perfect. That would be fun. Um, Deb is another presenter here. It does amazing things on Craft Around the Clock, you guys. And like I said, if you're not a follower, please, the description in the link is in the link is in the description. And it's not just it's 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 all kinds of crafting, anything you can think of. I've uh, just a wash there on my pumpkin. I'm gonna do a little wash for leaves. I really didn't get out green. So you know what? Let's just use the tealy color. Just we can keep with this color palette. So I'm just gonna make little leaf shapes on my pumpkin, because I like to have the pumpkin sitting down on something. So we'll just do that. And a little stem, which I'm gonna just go with a brown for the stem of burnt sienna. Because again, sometimes I start and I limit my palette. It's not a bad idea to limit your color palette and not be grabbing a different color for everything. It gets to be kind of a disjointed painting. I kind of, uh, a lot of times, will have a color palette in mind. And I just have a little stem there maybe with a little shadow let's see four minutes oh so you guys when i'm done remember to hang on for the next crafter uh you might have to refresh your page a little bit but you're in for a wonderful day of crafting so I might, i'm going to go ahead and maybe add some little uh lines on the tail as we go it's still a little wet so let me do one to show you and then when it's dry i'm going to put more detail something maybe like this I don't want to drag it too much through that white uh, but you know that typical little turkey kind of a tail look kind of like that just adds a little decorative touch right so I'm going to play around with that a little bit we're almost ready to wrap up but I'm going to let that dry a tiny bit any questions at all you guys uh Thoughts or uh, suggestions for what to write a across the bottom, that would be great. Um, and also, let me just quickly show you, because I will uh, throw in the comments the workshop. So I've got a workshop coming up, uh, starting on my birthday, you guys. And it's only $10, and we're going to paint two paintings. We're painting that winter scene, which is, was really popular in my membership last year. And we're painting the covered bridge. So we're going to do a nice fall painting, a nice winter painting it's ten dollars it's three days the first day we'll go over supplies we'll get our base coating and our backgrounds done and then we'll spend two other days painting the paintings all recorded so you don't have to make it so i would love it if you would like to know more about that um let me find the link and i'll put it in the in the uh, comments here and let's see here it is so if you are interested and you want more information here is the link for that let's see stick it in there. there you go yeah like i said it's a ten dollar um a class for, for three days it's just sort of so you can see how i paint a little more and if you like my style of painting i would love to paint with you and i don't just do landscapes i do all sorts of things i'll have some other one-off classes for christmas some nice christmas designs as well oh okay posted both places uh yeah so he's a lot of fun but i want to go ahead and do some more of this line work this white is just about dry and then you step back step back from your painting and then you can kind of make it your own you can add you know highlights and whatnot i like the idea i didn't plan to come in and do this with the washy look but i really kind of like it and like i said we're doing that little wreath in the membership this afternoon so i'm trying to incorporate more watercolor or watercolor techniques into the group and i'm taking a little liner brush now with just watered down paint because I can go ahead and maybe make a few little feathery lines. So look at him up close. Um, I think it's just a few little heavier lines where I have the wash. I can just add on. Maybe do some going up the neck that are smaller because those little feathers would be smaller there. 
and then these lines, which is kind of fun. So I might just do this. And I'm watching my time because we have a minute. And, and, and just a quick little thing is, if you think you don't have time, look at what we did in 45 minutes. So I'm going to pop off. I want you guys to stick around and see who is up next. I don't have that in front of me. but And I will see you again. I pop on my page live a lot to paint, and then I'll see you next week with my Craft Around the Clock segment. Thank you all for being here. I will see you soon. Have fun painting and have a good week. Bye.